Hey everybody, I'm going to show you today two quick ways to set up peer reviews in um, Canvas. And then I'm going to show you, then I'm going to share um, at the bottom of the email that this video is accompanied with or in the uh, instructions in the video in, on YouTube, some links for how do students see um, these discussions. These are Canvas prepared tutorials that are really great. We don't have the full options to see it from a student's point of view. Um, for example, we have a student view to see what an assignment looks like or a quiz, but we can't assign peer reviews to our student view. So this video is going to be how to set up the peer review, and then I'm going to link you to Canvas's very um, quick and easy three-minute how-to. And the how-to is for students. So where do they find the peer review, and then how do they respond? So watch this video, and then right after you watch this video, take a quick look at Canvas's. And what I would do is I would definitely embed Canvas's video into your classroom space if you're going to be using peer review. So here's where we start. I am actually in a um, uh, Canvas class right now. This is my template. So this is not a, a real class. This is just one of my practice courses. And I'm going to go to my assignments feature. Now, there are two places to assign peer review. One's in the assignments um, and one is in the discussions. Uh, when students submit into a discussion, everybody can see their discussions, right? But if you assign peer review, you're telling them you specifically just have to respond to John and Sally. Okay. Um, the other thing is, is that if you do it in the assignment feature, um, you get all of the tools that that's built into that assignment submission that you get to use when you give feedback to students. Students get to use when they give feedback to each other. So I'm going to start with the assignments feature. And then I'll show you how to set it up in the other feature uh, for discussions. And so you can choose to use it in either space. I think the assignments feature is more dynamic. Um, it retains formatting and things like that. If students submit for peer review in a discussion, they can cut and paste smaller texts, for example. That'd be great for foreign language communications, uh, you know, if you're having a smaller discussion. But if you want them to do peer review of an entire paper, the assignment feature is really probably your best option. So to set it up, you have an assignment, first of all. So let's imagine it's my Wikipedia essay. I'm going to click into it. I've already created this essay, but you can do this from scratch. Let's just create one from scratch, actually. So I'm going to add an assignment. Um, we're going to call it practice with peer review. Let's just say it's worth, I don't know, 12 points. Just being random here. <laughs> Once the shell of the assignment is created, click into the title again and choose Edit. You have all of these wonderful options, and you can watch my assignment, how to create an assignment video to, to figure out how this is set up, right? Um, how to do points display and all of that. Submission type needs to be online if you're having students do paper peer review, so especially if you're teaching a writing class so the student's format can be observed. Otherwise, it's going to strip all format if they just do a text entry. Do not allow a text entry, okay? I wouldn't allow website URL or media recordings. I'd only allow file uploads. I would consider restricting this to doc, docx, PDF. Um, don't allow Google Docs. Um, don't allow... Um, uh, dot pages. Um, students who are using Google Docs can download as a doc. Students who are using um, Apple products can download as a document or as a PDF. And that allows, again, us to retain the formatting so it pops open in the feature. All right. So once you have that set up submission type that it's online, the students are submitting a file. Um, you can, I have other videos on Turnitin and plagiarism, so we're going to skip that for now, but choose peer reviews. Now, in here, you either allow to manually assign a peer review or you, so it just does it, you tell it how many and it will determine, um, or you can automatically assign it or main, no, excuse me, <laughs> let me flip that. Manually is you get to choose who's in what group. Maybe you've already predetermined that. If you go automatic, um, it's just going to say three reviews per student. Always add, this is one of the best practice tips that, that um, Associate Dean Harm is sending out for English and ESL. Always add more reviews than you require. Here's why. Sometimes students don't post on time. So if you have real small groups, maybe your groups are, you only want them to respond to two people, give them four. 
because sometimes they won't get four other students actually submitting. They may only get two of the four. And because of accessibility issues, we want to just make sure everybody's participating. So give them four. Say you are required to do two. You can get a little bit of extra credit in this homework if you do three, that kind of thing if you want to. Um, you can assign the due date for peer reviews if you want. You can also add an anonymity option. And you just click Save. So once all that is set up, you'll notice peer review is over here now. If you want to click in, you can kind of see, um, I, I said automatically assign reviews, go ahead and assign them. So I'm clicking on this little button here. Let's see what happens. Just don't panic if you don't see any of the assigned ones yet. What ends up happening is, is everything looks blank. This is one of the things I think faculty get a little nervous about. It looks blank. You don't see the assignments. The assignments for each student, so for Brianna's would appear, for Brian's would appear, right underneath their name. But because this is my template class, and um, uh, these are faculty members who have agreed to, to partake for, uh, for my videos, they haven't actually submitted anything in here. Once they do, it will look something like this. You'll see names that start to appear underneath. Okay, so when, once we start to assign it, once Brianna submits, then it will be, a, you know, then, then people will be assigned to her and so on and so forth. So once somebody assists, uh, uh, submits their paper, they will be auto-assigned. If you don't want to do auto-assigning, you can just go over here instead. You see my class list. You can go in and then you can choose student names that if you want to if you want to set this up manually so you'll see how manually you can set up each student so you can mix groups you can have enclosed groups whatever you need so what students will do is they will go into the assignment either through the module or if you keep this available to find their peer reviews they'll click on the assignment and then they will see who they're assigned over here i'm still set up as faculty but they'll see the names of whom they're assigned once they submit their paper and once they've got uh, all, everybody has submitted, the peer reviews will be meted out to everybody. So what a student will do is exactly what we do when we go in and find a paper. Here's what they're going to see. So you click into, I'm going to click into my Twitter assignment, for example. Let me just go to SpeedGrader. They'll get a version of SpeedGrader that's open and it will look just like this. And what's great about doing it in the assignments feature is that if I've left feedback on this test student submission, they won't see anything. Everything is really private. It's just between the reviewer and the student. But they will get all of these tools where they can do a little bubble comment or they can post in particular places. They can leave as many comments as they need to. They can leave highlight comments. And what's nice is that when you're a professor, you can go in and see all of the different reviews later. There'll be a pull-down menu, and you can see who's left those reviews. They can leave an overall comment. Overall, I think you did really well. I have had my students in my classes tell me that when they're using these features, that the submission did not stick, the green didn't turn on, until they filled out a rubric. So if you have rubrics tied to your um, uh, peer review, tell your students to go ahead and fill it out. It's not going to actually grade the student. It's just they can kind of say, hey, I think you guys have reached proficiency level, or I think this is excellent, but I think maybe you do want to work on your format. Uh, just tell them to go ahead and fill it out. You could also tell them to fill everything out at 100% if you don't want them to have that pressure. And again, the rubrics that students fill out do not carry into the Grade Center. It's just another way for students to give each other feedback. And I actually think if you have rubrics, it's wonderful. It's an absolutely wonderful option for students to see how they're going to be graded and to think about that when they're working on their assignments. So that's the how, how it's set up in the Assignments feature. Let me show you how it's set up in a discussion. So I'm going to go right back to um, the discussions. I'm just going into my class here. And if you go to a discussion, one of the interesting things you have to note is that when you're setting up like the, a peer review discussion, once you create the shell, you edit it, of course. You're not going to see a peer review option until you choose graded. You can leave it at zero if you just want it to be peer review as part of that type of assignment. 
or if it's a peer review, you can make it worth a certain number of points and then do all or nothing graded, like complete, incomplete. You can set it up however you wish. You choose require peer reviews. Again, you can manually or automatically, we'll just say auto assign three. And again, students won't be assigned to each other until they've all submitted. And again, you have um, these uh, due dates that you can attach to it as well. But I don't recommend, you can have a due date in here, I think, but I wouldn't build it in there and block it because of the moving online and our accessibility issues right now with considering moving these online. And we want students to figure out how to use this. So I'm going to provide a link to this YouTube video, which is absolutely wonderful. And it shows um, what it looks like. And then this link as well, it shows what it looks like for how to set this up, step-by-step -step reminder, how to set it up in a discussion. And then even this, this, this link gives us a, um, a sort of like a, a hot link to um, little bits and pieces that I may have forgotten in this video. But you can see how in the assignments, this is actually what it looks like for a student in the assignments feature, they've been assigned this particular student, right? So maybe the, the student who's looking at the video is John and John's been assigned to Emily Boons. They click on it and that's how they get into that student's assignment feature. When students go through the discussions, what they'll find is they click on the discussion and at the very top of the discussion, they'll see who they've been assigned once they've submitted their own discussion. So play around with these. We can talk about best practices, about whether using it, it, it for smaller assignments, discussions should be fine because when students leave feedback, it should just be a little comment on the right hand side. But for longer essays, I would probably recommend just doing the assignments feature. Again, at the bottom of this video and in my accompanying email, you'll see links for um, uh, these other videos for that you can share with your students um, and just reminders of that step-by-step -step checklist for setting up peer review. Play around with it. I think it's really interesting. It gives students a different type of engagement and it works perfectly for moving your class online, especially if you are very workshop oriented. Reach out if you have questions.